Okay, I had a request from a viewer for a, uh, a video pointing out some of the things to consider when buying a, uh, a small Asian bench lathe. So when I say small, we're, we're looking up to about mm, 12 inch swing. Um, anything from uh, 9 inch swing upwards is getting into the medium size I suppose. Um, anything below that is basically the sort of thing you'd really use for smaller work, particularly hobby work as far as model making goes. Um, this lathe is more suited uh, to uh, you know, general maintenance work. You can do model work on it, no problem whatsoever. But if you're going to do a lot of model work, and it's going to be very small, uh, y you want to get a small lathe. I mean, that's why they make small lathes, because it's made for small jobs. It's as simple as that. OK, you determine what size you want. And then you look at the features. Now, uh, going from the headstock down, um, obviously chuck size, something to consider, how big are the jobs going to be, the swing, um, how much room you need to spin around whatever you're doing, um, spindle size, bigger is better, more rigid, uh, but it's not a deal breaker because well, most of the time you won't be feeding through the, the, uh, the spindle. Um, but for some jobs, uh, gunsmithing, uh, things like that, yeah, that's very important. Now the actual bearings on the, uh, the spindle, um, roller bearing is obviously uh, a lot more heavy duty than ball, so um, if you're doing heavy work, um, roller bearings are definitely the way to go. But for smaller size loads, ball race is quite okay, it's all adjustable. Uh, for any wear, so it's no big deal. All of the lays, the motor can be reversed on them, uh, so you can drive the, uh, the chuck backs or forwards. can be handy at times. Um, they all have a safety cutout switch. The power goes off, the unit um, shuts down, the switch deactivates, and it won't start up when the power comes back on until you... It basically has to be reset. Uh, here we have a um, reverse tumbler lever on this particular lathe. The reverse tumbler allows you to feed your work in either direction. It reverses the lead screw. It's a great feature. It's not always just used for cutting threads. It's handy for you know profiling and stuff like that. Good to have. If you can get it, go for it um, because it is a very very handy feature. Quick change gearbox. Now this is something all the small lays generally don't have. It seems to start at about uh, 9 inch swing upwards and all the bigger lays generally um, have a quick change gearbox these days but you know up to 12 inch uh, I mean it doesn't apply on every lathe. For instance I mean a geared head drive is very good. Uh, it's handy to be able to change the uh, spindle speed quickly um, but a quick change gearbox is, in my opinion, a more important feature because you, you'll be changing the feed speed or wanting to change the feed speed a lot more often than you'll be changing the, the, the actual spindle speed. The problem is with geared head models, the cheaper ones, the 12 inch sort of size, quite often you don't get a quick change gearbox and you think, oh that looks like a nice lathe, look it's got a geared head. but it hasn't got a quick change gearbox so you're basically stuck to machining at one speed which is pretty lousy really. With a quick change you can basically take it off with a coarse feed quickly and then you can fine finish with a uh, with a finishing cut at a finer uh, feed, feed rate. Um, on all these small lathes the change gears are pretty lightweight. Uh, I mean they're okay, they do the job but the Asian lays generally the uh, the change gears aren't wonderful things, but uh, they're adequate, and that's that all we can say about them. Um, they all seem to share similar sizes. Once you get up to about um, 12 inch swing, they go for a heavier size generally, but uh, a lot of the small ones use similar stuff. Okay, um, this one's got lead screw covers on it great idea, um, keeps all the rubbish off your lead screw and I mean a lot of it's going to fall down here and you know they just stop a, a lot of cleaning be, being necessary. You can you can grease that and forget about it, it'll last for years. The bed, 
Well, obviously, the wider the bed, the more rigid the lathe will generally be. It's uh, a narrow gutted lathe, you know, the, uh, the accuracy isn't going to be as good because you've got more chance of tilting on the, uh, on the carriage, etc. So this one's about uh, five and a half inch width, I think. Um, double prismatic. I mean, most of the Asian lathes use prismatic uh, ways on their uh, on their uh, beds, and uh, they hold tolerances extremely well. They're not all hardened. Um, depends on the model. Hardened is better, obviously, but this isn't hardened. Uh, uh, it's done a massive amount of work and it's still as good as gold um, provided you oil them and keep them clean it's not a real big issue so I wouldn't get too concerned about the fact that the ways aren't hardened um, cross light travel obviously you want as much cross light travel as possible and you also want to come back away from the chuck as far as possible so that you can actually get in and get your cutter uh, on the outside edge of whatever job you're working on so if you've got a big job that's taking up the full swing you know, you, you, it's not much good having all that swing if you can't get the, the cutter in to, on the, the outside of the job. So you want the, the cross slide to come back enough that you can get onto those big jobs. You also want enough that you can go through adequately and um, work in the centre. Um, on the carriage, uh, a carriage lock uh, to keep you in position when you're, uh, when you're machining, you should have one. Most lathes have it these days. It might be a bit light, uh, but you can always beef them up. Um, the actual cross light itself, um, you can get them with T slots in them, so you can move the tool post in or out. Not a bad idea. Um, and generally, you don't do that very often anyway. And the downside of T slots is that they then weaken the cross light because you're machining a slot or two slots the full length of the uh, cross slide which will allow it to flex uh, a lot more than a, than a perfectly solid cross slide. I mean you can easily drill a cross slide and tap it, it's only cast iron. Uh, if you want to fit a, uh, a vertical mill slide or, uh, or, uh, or whatever, you know, a T-slot, I mean it's, um, uh, it's easy to, to machine these and you don't weaken them to any significant degree. So T-slot Handy to have, but no big deal. Nice flat surface is a good thing. You can uh, you can put a, a vertical mill slide on no problem, uh, any position you like. On the uh, actual um, top slide, uh, I mean most of these Asian lathes they're a bit on the light side really, uh, but they're adequate. They do the job, um, but they should all really. F from what I've seen, be a bit heavier. So they're okay. Um, this one's got four uh, adjusters, which is not a bad thing. So, you know, the more adjusters, the better, I suppose. Um, but basically, just look at the uh, how heavy they are. Look at how strong the compound mount is. I mean, the 9x20s are known to flex in this area, but you can modify them. Uh, so it's not a, a big issue, but it just, just means you've got to do a bit of work before you get them up to scratch. Um, the bigger sizes you won't get tool chatter very very much. Uh, if you use sh sharp tools, good tools, very unlikely that you'll get chatter with anything from 10 inch up. Uh, and a 9 inch shouldn't really do it uh, if it's made properly, but uh, it's a known fact that the 9x20s do, do chatter, uh, and it, so do the smaller ones. When you're working harder metals, I mean, if you're only working brass or alloy, won't happen, shouldn't happen. But still, yeah, uh, chatter can be an issue, but not for this sort of lathe and not for the bigger ones either. Okay, we come down. Oh, I should, actually, before we do, we, you've got your uh, your auto feed here, which is just basically uh, locks in the, the lead screw. Um, I mean, they all have that. Um, on your, um, your horizontal feed wheel, some of them don't have a very good, or, uh, or even have a, uh, a graduated scale. I mean, if you're feeding in, uh, it's nice to be able to measure the uh, increments that you're using. Otherwise, you have to use a dial gauge or something like that. 
So yeah, the scale there is a handy thing. I mean, all the cross slides have it, but they don't always necessarily have much on this uh, this wheel here. Tail stock. Um, they, the smaller ones generally have a Morse 2. Uh, this is a Morse 3. Uh, it's much beefier than a Morse 2, so the tail stock is generally going to be a lot more rigid if you've got a Morse 2 than a, a Morse 3 than a Morse 2. Um, the length of uh, travel in the, uh, the tail stock um, shaft can be a little or a lot. Uh, it's no deal breaker if it's not terribly long because you can easily just move up your, uh, your tail stock. This one's got a cam lock, it's a great feature, it makes it very easy to reposition the tail stock. And you know, if you're centre boring, you're going to be moving, and it's a deep, a deep uh, bit of machining you're doing, you're going to be moving the tail stock up as you go through the job um, at least twice. Cam lock's good. But um, screw down is okay. Screw down can be good because cam lock you can't leave it loose um, and say thread with the tail stock where it'll just pull the tail stock along into the work uh, because the tail stock will probably you know, come loose and uh, it might flop around. With the, uh, the screw down tight, the old type, you can just set them at a very light tension if you're threading it will slowly pull the tail stock into the work um, without, you know, without a problem. So, yeah, they've both got their good points, but I would prefer to go cam lock any day. Um, it's just so handy. Now, that's about it on the lathe. Um, I've tried to sort of just go over the basics on it. Um, once again, don't fall into the mine's bigger than yours syndrome and buy something that's bigger than you really want. Um, it's a pointless exercise. A lot of the little lathes are, are really very nice. Um, I considered smaller lathes than this. I also considered geared head models. I went for this because this is the ideal size. Bed length is quite good. I mean, longer bed, okay, but the longer the bed, the more chance you're going to get a flex. Um, shorter bed will be uh, more rigid and that's about it really um, I hope this video has been of some use and uh, see you later